It always feels really weird when you start to record a video and you're just talking to electronics. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just a thought. It's weird. Hello, everyone. Um, this has been a very much requested video on my channel. Um, today, so what is it, the 30th of October 21? Um, the Dropsy Acoustic Jam video, uh, Jam 2, I forget which one it is, the one with that coordinate. Um, a lot of people have requested that I do a tutorial, so this is that video. I do have a tendency to blather on about stuff, so this is going to be a long video. Um, there's probably going to be a lot of just like me trying to explain what it is that I do. <laughs> now. What's difficult with that for me is, let's gonna move this microphone. Is that there's so much to it in terms of how my brain works. Um, I'm probably just gonna leave it there and just get on with it. To be honest, there's just a lot to it. There's a lot to it. But let's not overcomplicate things. I'll just take you through what it is that I've got uh, that that I do and. Um, how I think about it in the meantime. I am self-taught, I don't have any theory knowledge. I probably know theory naturally, just because I've been playing guitar for a long, long time. Long time. I think I've had about three lessons in my life. And they were all under the age of 10, so I don't remember what they were. So, as always, let's get on with it. I've wasted a minute of your time. Two minutes, maybe. Let's tune a drop C. So that's your C. There's your G. racing through this because I don't usually talk while I'm playing. Um, so G, that's another C after your G. So C, G, C, F, A, and back to, that's a D, that's not back to C at all, otherwise I'd be in Open C tune. D. Now, I'm not going to... <clears throat> I'm not going to rely on the tuner to tune my guitar for me. I'm going to play a chord. uses all of the strings so I don't know what this chord is I'm basically making a D shape but I'm not playing that note I'm just gonna listen for any sort of inconsistencies in the tuning and I'll adjust from there and it's all by ear so it's really good ear training method to use just tr just tuning your guitar is probably a good lesson to learn if you're just starting um, I imagine the people that want to play the song are probably a little more versed, a little more advanced in their playing. Um, so I will try and keep that to a minimum. If you want to learn like the basic stuff, there's a lot of channels on YouTube that can do that for you. to me. Cool. So, um, I'm, I'm probably going to have to try and tab this out. Let me, I will tab it out, but I'm not doing the strumming pattern. That's what this video is for. You can follow the tab for the chord, um, for the chords you're supposed to be using or, or that you should be hitting. <laughs> um, you just get a feel of the rhythm for this one. So you can like play along 
with this video, the other video, whichever. Either way, we're five minutes in and I haven't even done anything yet, so... The initial chord that you play when you first start the tune. It's a real stretch and that is going to make your hand hurt because it's across five frets. So your index finger is on the fifth fret on the second string. It's probably the fifth string in this case, you know what I mean? I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six. So fifth fret, index finger. And then your ring finger is on seventh. That is not the chord. I've forgotten how to play my own chord. <laughs> I've actually forgotten. <laughs> There we go. Right. And then your pinky finger, which is the one that is going to absolutely burn while you're trying to learn this. Um, that one is on 5, 6, 7, 8, ninth fret. And then middle finger is on that one. So the chord that you're hitting is... But then the accompanying... The accompany accompanying notes, if that's a word, are the open strings, which are already in tune with that chord. I'm going to mute my phone, hold on. Shut up, motherfucker. Right, so that's your first chord. Sounds like anxiety, right? A little bit unsure. The first bit's nice, that's like... Curious. Now it's anxious. <laughs> right. Um, so that's pretty much the inspiration for that entire tune, was that beginning chord. That's how I think about how I make music. Um, yeah, so the strumming pattern for that first part playing about that anxious part at least for the most part you're playing about that anxious part of that chord and it's normally the last two or three strings so you're strumming down on that note and you're picking up on two strings so so you're trying to keep the rhythm of So it's the whole, and you're just alternating between those two. And if you want to get a bit spicier, of course, this entire thing is essentially a bar chord at this point. You can add that note if you want, it just gives it a bit of extra depth. Index finger right on that fifth fret, both first and second string, and then you let go of it and you go back to the beginning again. And you slide up five, six, seven, eighth fret with your index finger. And you bar the whole lot with your index finger, and then it's these two notes. With your, so I'm not flipping you off, I'm uh, trying to move my finger so you can see those two. <laughs> you're, um, you're barring all of that. And you're sliding down to the third with your index finger. All of this is barred, it's all a big slide. There's three chords here that you're gonna learn. So that chord, that 
that's the important bit of that chord. When you come back to that, what I, I guess it's probably a C. I'm not going to get technical, like I say, I've no idea what it is, I just feel it. And then you just muck about with this chord, just letting go of your index finger on that D shape. Uh, I've forgotten how it goes, it is... essentially hammering on with that so you're going and then you're doing a G shape still hammering on and then back to the beginning you play that through twice Nice little bridge chord. So you're only playing the first four strings for this part, uh, this entire part. It's a uh, stretch. So your index finger is on the fourth fret, and your little finger is on the sixth, seventh fret. On oh, I don't even know the two middle strings. <laughs> That one. <laughs> but you're playing the first four strings. You're not playing the last two. And you can mute those strings with your hand. So that one, your little finger, is muting. You're holding this note, but then the back of your little finger is muting that other note. That other string, sorry. And then what I like to do while I'm playing this is use... This is going to be a bit of a stretch, but this is how I do it. You, while you're holding that note with your index finger, you're also using the back of your hand, like to mute that last string. Didn't play that right. See, both strings don't ring. So it's the two fingers that are on the fretboard holding down notes. These two are doing nothing, they're just floating. They're also muting the strings that are, you know, the ones that shouldn't be played for that, for that part. basically just swap the position so you're doing index finger is on four little finger on seven you're just swapping them where they are you're just going from there to there still playing the first four strings in that order it's a bit easier to mute the strings now because you've got your entire index finger on the fretboard and then you're going on to the it's the same chord shape you just slide it down from uh, your index finger being on the fourth down to the second, your little finger obviously is going to follow because it's attached to your hand. <laughs> and then, uh, that is actually incorrect. No, not the hand part, the what you're playing. So you've gone from that to, and then your little finger stays in that place on that chord. You slide down and then you hold on to the second fret with your index finger. And it's the same four strings on the top. Is in tune. Just slide your index finger up to the third. This little finger stays in place. And then your ring finger will probably hit the fifth fret on the that string, the big one, the fat one, big fat string. Next finger slides up to the fifth, and then you restart. A little bit of embellishment if you like, seventh fret harmonic. Try and aim for the middle four strings if you can, because that's where the good stuff is. 
And then you go back to that D-shaped chord. So, that bit is not as hard as it sounds. If you can do hammer-ons and pull-offs quite well while you're holding a chord, um, that D shape. And then that muting thing I was talking about with the back of your finger that's happening right here on those two notes, which is... So essentially you're aiming for the bass notes to really fill in the melody for this part, and they go... Let go back to that open C string, which is the beauty of playing drop C acoustic in my opinion, you know. Oof. thing happening there which is a double pull off and then an open note and then you hammer it back on and then as you upstroke you then slide up the guitar entire part goes on again. You may have to watch that a few times through to really understand it and I will play it slower now just so that you can really play along with me, you know. So we'll go from time you're playing on these notes for the bass, the bass part. My thumb is muting that the C string until it's needed in the next bit which is the so you can think of that as like a G chord that chord right there you're just sliding up and back really close for this, just so you can really see what I'm doing. I even need to lean it forward actually, that might be better. Like I say, that part plays through twice, and then after that, it goes back to the initial chord that the song starts with. So that is difficult to uh, get back into because it is such a stretch. You know, it's going to take some practice, real good finger strength. I've got one of those like uh, spring-loaded 
guitarist compression things it's supposed to do for finger strength and I used it for a good while while I was trying to learn how to play this song <sighs> I gotta be honest I think they're a bit of a gimmick because nothing beats actually just trying to smash it out you know just get in and do it so up the neck if you like like crispy sound if you instead of strumming over the sound hole go a little bit closer to the bridge it gets real tinny so you can kind of give your songs a little more I'm not sure of the word because it's more of like an emotional thing cadence it might be a cadence I think it's a cadence let's go with that for the time being someone can give me a better word in the comments I guess um, so once you've played that, once you've played that beginning part again, what do you do? You go up the neck, you slide back into those bar chords. That's the end of the video after that. I don't think I've missed any sections. Um, yeah, so pretty much it's those. <clears throat> and just because it's the two year anniversary and it's got 9,000 views, thank you all so much for that, by the way. Like, that's crazy. Ah, uh, man, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those. It's absolutely mad. Actually, I'll play it a little slower, so if you do want to jam with, go for it. We'll probably, I usually play it about 120-ish BPM, so I'm going to try and play it at about 80.
I just realised I have actually missed a part, and it's right at the very end, it's those bar chords. So I like that, um... Same as that bit, but you're just barring with the middle finger now. You're keeping your ring finger on that fret, and then barring down the three frets, so... This is so long since I've played this. <laughs> nice little resolution, right? It's like, not quite sure, warming up to the idea. Think of it as a conversation, that's how I write music. <laughs> I hope someone watches this almost half an hour long video. I hope, you know, I, I'll tab out a few things and I'll make a download link somewhere for someone to, uh, for you to download and you can see the chords. So you get a bit more of a head start into what it is I'm on about and what it is I'm doing. You probably won't even watch this video all the way through. It's one of those things you'll just sort of chop and change and go through the parts that you need to practice if you want to learn it. So, yeah. I can't take credit for that one. That one is Callum Graham. Callum Graham on Candy Rat Records and the song is called Grace. If you don't know it, definitely check it out because that is my new obsession at the moment. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, my name's Matt. Everyone calls me Dobby because my last name's Dobson. So hence the uh, username, wherever that is on the screen. Have a lovely weekend. I certainly will because the weather is great and I'm in a great mood. So yeah. <laughs>